afternoon. Um, it's Saturday, it's about, yeah, it's just gone quarter past four. Um, and I've just got in from uh, Double Up Saturday. So uh, treating myself, or me and my daughter, to two movies today at the cinema. So I thought I'd come and do a bit of a quick review of both of them. So uh, this morning we went to go and see Super Mario Brothers. Um, and then I've just come back from seeing Renfield. Um, so first of all, big shout out to Cineworld in Basildon, um, which is not quite our local, but is, is the one that we go to most often because we both have um, Cineworld cards um, and we do like to milk it as much as possible. Um, so yeah, so that's where we were today. All right, so quick review. All right, so Super Mario Brothers, that's the first film we went to see. Um, not the oldest ones in there, I have to say. Um, there was an old couple that came in just before the film started, which made me feel uh, slightly better. I uh, was slightly worried, as it's a kids' movie, that we were going to have a lot of talking and chatting and moving around during the film, um, because I've taken my niece and nephew to the cinema before. I know exactly what it's like. Um, I have to say, big shout out to the kids in the cinema. They were really, really good. In fact, I think the only talking I had during the film was from the adults. So well done, kids. Um, so, the movie itself. Um, so it was, so it's done by the same guys who do the Minions movie, so Illumination. Um, so you know what you're getting, really bright, um, sort of in your face sort of animation, um, which I think uh, I think suited this film perfectly because um, the game, you know, has got so many elements to it that is quite in your face. So that worked really well. Um, so we had Chris Pratt, who was playing uh, Mario. Uh, Charlie Day was voicing Luigi and the very wonderful Anya Taylor-Joy was playing Princess Peaches. Um, and the film is, is actually really good. I was a bit worried um, because I have seen reviews that were really negative about the film. Um, however, I know that actually, despite all the negative reviews, the film's been really popular. I mean, it's been out for, what is it, two weeks, I think it's been out. And um, the cinema we were in, it's in one of the larger screenings. And, okay, it wasn't sold out, but we went to the first showing on Saturday morning. And there were still quite a few people in there. Uh, so this movie is defying the critics. And do you know what? It deserves to. It's just a bit of fun. Um, so the film just follows Mary and Luigi, well... More Mario, Luigi gets himself into trouble and Mario has to go out and rescue his brother. Um, and to do that, he has to team up with Princess Peaches um, and Toad and they have to go out and defeat King Bowser, uh, who, by the way, is voiced by Jack Black and it is a perfect casting. Um, yeah, and it just is a bit of cheesy fun. Um, there's a really great soundtrack. Um, you know, we had ACDC and Bonnie Tyler and Beastie Boys. I mean, that's amazing in itself. Um, and you know what? There was a lot of stuff in there. So although it's really bright and colourful and there's some really silly bits in it that um, uh, appeal to children because uh, there were some kids laughing during some of the bits in there. But there's also bits in there that are purely for older people, should we say, because it, it really does kind of... Um, mention or have lots of things in there that go proper old school Mario yeah it even goes back and adds bits um from Kong okay so it has those little elements from the original game you know where everything was side on and you just had to go anyway um so it's 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 out there for the kids the kids will enjoy it what it looks like and some of the silly bits in it but there are some things in there for the adults as well um and can I just say that there is one song in there and it's Jack Black um, singing his song for Princess Peaches that I have never laughed so hard in my life. It was just, it was just a thing to behold. So if you haven't seen Super Mario Brothers, but you're a bit of a fan of Jack Black, even if you go for this one bit, and trust me, you will know the bit that I'm talking about. You go for that, it's worth the entrance price alone. Trust me, it was hilarious. But overall... Um, yeah, I don't see what the problem is, okay, what are critics expecting? It's a movie based on a computer game, they're notoriously cheesy anyway, it's an animation that is probably about 80% um, aimed at kids anyway, um, but yeah, it is just a really good entertaining film, it's not overly long, um, so it was quite good, so if I had to give it a score, I would give that 
I'd give that an 8 out of 10. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so that was my morning. Uh, and then we went and had lunch and came back, had a bit of an ice cream sundae. Uh, then we went in to see Renfield, which has only just come out this weekend, I believe. Um, and if you don't know anything about it, it stars Nicolas Cage. More about him in a minute. Uh, Nicholas Holt. And now I never get this name right. Alkafina? Oh, Alkafina. Oh, she's brilliant. I feel really bad that I never get her name right. And I feel awful. But hopefully I haven't butchered that too much. Anyway, so... Um, Obviously, you may have guessed this is based on the servant of uh, Count Dracula. Um, if you know the story, Renfield was his servant before he tries to take on Jonathan Harker. Anyway, none of that is mentioned. All we need to know is Count Dracula, Renfield. Um, and it gives you a bit of a backstory. And it's based in modern day uh, New Orleans. And... Yeah, so it's just about the dynamic between Nicholas Holt Renfield and Nicholas Cage's Dracula. So Nicholas Holt is, uh, sorry, Renfield is uh, attending like these um, group sessions where it talks about toxic codependent relationships. Um, and it's about, so it's about how Nicholas Holt Renfield needs to stand up to Dracula. Um as well as that going on, you actually have a uh, another side plot which goes alongside it, where Orkfina's, oh so sorry, her character, which is a, a police officer, who is trying to take down a notorious crime family. So as these plots go along, they kind of intertwine, and it, it, all hell breaks loose. Um, so what's it like? Um, so I went in thinking it was a horror comedy, which it is. Some of, There are some very, very funny moments. Um, surprised, actually, by some of the action pieces as well. There were some really cool stunts. Um, completely OTT. And I mean, blood gushing, guts. If you don't like gore, do not go see this film because there are some horrific, but horrifically funny, uh, death scenes. Um, so if you're not a fan of that sort of stuff, you might want to steer clear. If you love that sort of stuff, um, say like John Wick-esque, but, you know, on acid, um, definitely go see this movie. Uh, the set pieces were really cool. Um, well done to the stunt guys who were involved in this. Um, yeah, just, uh, okay, acting. Um, Nicolas Cage. Just played Nicolas Cage in a lovely leather cape and some great prosthetics. Um, he is him. Um it's kind of a role he was born to play. I mean, every so often he'd do these little looks and these little thing, and I'm like, oh, that's Cassie Troy from Face Off, and oh my god, didn't you do that in like Leaving Las Vegas? And it's just him. It doesn't take away. It's just that I recognise certain things, but he, he was he's born to play this role. He's great as Dracula. Um, Nicholas Holt, who I was very surprised that I found him extremely charismatic in this film. That's worrying. Um, not that, it's just that, you know, I'm used to him from, like, a, about a boy. And, you know, when he was in um, the X-Men movies. Um, but, yeah, he really carries this. I think he really carries this off well. He plays Renfield with that sort of sad um, longing, um, the, the fact that he's kind of been in, in servitude for this whole entire time. But he also really pulls off the kick-ass moves. I know it's not him. I know he's not gone into the, like, you know, Keanu Reeves, John Wick style training, but he does look really good and he really pulls it off. Um, so kudos to everyone involved in the action sequences because you made him look amazing. Um, Aquafina as well, as a police detective, she gets a little bit involved in the kick-ass stuff and that she, she pulls it off really well. So that was really fantastic uh, to see. She She's very funny in it, don't get me wrong, um, but she wasn't just funny she wasn't there to just be the sort of you say some funny lines and then everyone else will work around you she was really like there were some proper emotional bits that's like proper ballsy bits um so yes yeah, she was great in this film um like i said i went into it thinking it's just horror comedy and there was more elements to it if i had one gripe uh one moan um I would have liked to see maybe all those elements through the film seamlessly because sometimes you think, right, this is just horror comedy. Oh, no, wait, hold on. This is pure action. I, I wanna... And it, it kind of jumped, um, which wasn't always a bad thing. It was kind of nice because you kind of think, oh, it breaks it up a little bit. But I don't know. There was something 
maybe I would have liked to see a bit more of it mixed together and running seamlessly through the film. Like, so you don't feel like you're being jolted out of one genre and put into another one, um, like for a couple of times in the film. It's not that off-putting. Maybe I'm just being a bit picky. Um, but um, and, and how do you do that uh, about a movie about Dracula in modern-day New Orleans? Um, yeah, while Renfield's going to therapy. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was my only gripe. Um, however, I did, again, laugh my ass off. Um, and I found this really entertaining. Again, it's not a very long film. I think it's like an hour and 32 minutes. Um, so a really nice, entertaining movie. Um, and yeah, do you know what? I'm going to give that an 8 out of 10 as well. Because I thought that was thoroughly entertaining. Um, that's about it. Double Up Saturday has been um, a success. Both films have been really good. Um, yeah, I'm now going to drink my mug of tea. Um, I'll probably just chill out for the rest of the evening. Um, we've got some more films coming up soon. We've already got tickets to see things like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Um, we've got the new um, D'Artagnan and the Three Musketeers movie in French, don't you know? Um, we have tickets to see... Um, uh, Return of the Jedi on the 28th of April so if you didn't know by the way Return of the Jedi for its 40th anniversary should have screenings um, up and down the country um, it wasn't massively um, advertised, it was announced at Celebration they were going to do that um, I think UK fans were a little bit worried because cinemas haven't mentioned anything but like yesterday I think, possibly the day before they officially mentioned it so if you're a Star Wars fan and you want to see Return of the Jedi on a big screen, go, go, go right now. Um, I think some places are only doing it on the 28th, which is a Friday. There are a couple of cinemas that are doing it over the weekend, so you might be lucky. But yeah, go out there, get those tickets. Um, what else is coming up? I think that's it cinema-wise at the moment, but you know, any good movies coming out, give me a shout, let me know what's coming. Um, there's still a couple of films at the cinema that I would like to try and see in the next couple of weeks. I haven't seen Air yet. Um, the Michael Jordan one. Um, I also haven't seen Assassin's Club. Um, I don't think that's going to be out very long at my local cinema because it was being shown in one of those really small screens that you get. Um, so possibly I'll get to see that. Um, but who knows? I'm just going to, I'm just waffling now. So I'm going to leave you to it. Um, yeah, get out there, go see some films. Let me know what's good. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon.